Hi everyone and welcome to the Knit California podcast. My name is Leslie, I am Knit California here on YouTube and also over on Instagram and TikTok and today I've got a regular podcast episode with a finished object coming at ya. I'm so excited to be back today and sharing my finished object. Um, no, it's not the one I'm wearing. I know you've seen me wear this in like all of my videos recently. I can't help it. I'm absolutely obsessed. Uh, this is the Cal Cardigan by Claire Jackson. She's at Perfectly Knotted. Knit up in Explore Knits and Fibers. Uh, Fresh Balsam is the colorway on um, the worsted base. And I just like... I don't have many hand knit cardigans and I keep it just like on the back of my chair here and I just throw it on and it's like the perfect like it's just the perfect cardigan to wear like all the time when I'm like a little bit chilly or want to look nice on like a call or something um, and so I love it. And it's also like really easy to throw on over like my tank tops and stuff because it's still 96 degrees out today. So I want to wear knitwear, but I also like need to wear a tank top. So <laughs> this is my solution. But I'm not here today to talk to you about this, although I will have one other thing to talk to you about it later in the episode. Um, I'm here today to talk to you about my cumulus blouse. All right, so... Without further ado, ta -da -da -da. here it is. Doesn't it look so good? It's blocked, it's complete, it is, it's everything. I love it so much. Okay, I'll have a photo up somewhere too the whole time I'm talking about this so you can see what it looks like on because I'm, I'm not gonna put it on right now. It's just too warm. Yes, I realize I'm wearing a worsted white cardigan, but actually, you know what? Hold. Hold. Okay. Unhold. Oh, I can put it on. I mean, you're not going to be able to see all of it, so I'll still have the photo up, but at least you can, like, see what I'm talking about. Um, I thought it was going to be weird with this tank top underneath, but I actually think it kind of looks cute. Maybe this is not the right necklace with the v-neck, but, um... Yeah, it's not bad. So, okay. Let me look at my notes. I just wrote, I wrote out my whole notes for this project this morning. The Instagram is posted where I like write down all of my thoughts and show photos. All of this is also posted on Ravelry if you need to go and look at it and want to save the project there. Um, but now let's talk through it here. So, Okay, I just realized my microphone had not been plugged in for the first couple minutes there. So apologies if you could hear a bunch of camera noises and stuff. Let me restart over with what yarn this is. So Cumulus Blouse by Petite Knit. The yarn that I use for this is Sorelli Yarn in her Surrey sock base. This is a fingering weight Surrey, okay? So don't get this confused with like a normal lace weight Surrey. Um, it's 437 yards, 100 grams, 100% 100 Surrey alpaca. Um, and I used two strands of this held together. This one, this label is You Are Good For The Soul. This was from the Mayflower collection. And then the second one that I used um, is Studio, which this colorway is actually now called Charlotte, and it's one of the fall tonals. So this is Studio slash Charlotte. This is You Are Good For The Soul. You can see that they are two different colors, a light pink and a dark pink. And when I saw these together next to each other in my stash, I was like, I think that is gonna make just like a gorgeously marled color if I held these two together. And here's what they look like held together. Let's see if you can kind of like see that. 
sometimes I look at it and I'm like, oh yeah, it's way more like dark. You can see all the darker colors. And then I'll look at it and I'm like, no, but I see all of the light pink in there too. So it really is like both of them because they're marled together. And I just love it so much. Um, marling yarns is definitely like a fun way where you can play around with color combinations. I think a lot of times people use like two like different colors held together but I thought like a light and a dark pink would just be like really great held together and I think I was right so okay um continuing on with the yarn I did buy three skeins of each colorway and as I was knitting this up like this used way less yarn than I thought it would I think because the gauge was so big um I almost got away almost with using just two skeins of each. I think if I had left the body a little bit shorter, like maybe one inch shorter, I probably could have gotten away with two skeins of each, so four skeins total. But ultimately, because I wanted like one more inch on the body, um, I had to break into the third skeins of each of them. So now, like I weighed these this morning and one of them is like, uh, let's see, a regular skein is 100 grams, right? So one of them is 99 grams and one of them is 98 grams. Like, literally that's how much of the third skein I use of both of them. But, like, I needed it. I wouldn't have been able to do an I-cord bind off without it. I wouldn't have been able to have the, the like, you know, extra inch of length without it. So, ultimately, it is what it is and it's okay. I'll just have to figure out something else to use these, like, two basically full skeins for some other project. So we'll see. All right, let's talk about the sizing and gauge next. So the recommended gauge for this project is 18 stitches per four inches. Um, it is also recommended that you use a Surrey lace weight or a mohair lace weight yarn held double. So because I was using different yarn weight, two strands of Surrey sock is basically equal to a DK weight versus two strands of a mohair or a Surrey lace is equal to about a fingering weight yarn. I knew that I probably wanted to go up a needle size to account for that difference and I knew that my gauge was going to be bigger. I knew that I wasn't going to be able to meet that 18 stitch gauge and I was right. My gauge for this was 14 stitches per 4 inches. So instead of trying to meet the gauge of the pattern, I did a little bit of math just to figure out um, like what the width of my sweater was going to be if I kept up and like cast on the size that I was supposed to knit for my like bust size. Um, if I had met gauge and had the right yarn and everything, I would have knit an extra large. But because of my larger gauge, larger needle size, larger, larger yarn weight, I chose to go down and knit a size large in the pattern. And it fits great, so I have no qualms um, about that at all. Post blocking, after blocking this, I'm sitting at a final circumference of about 46 inches. That's about four inches of positive ease on me. And again, I think it's, I think it's perfect. I think it's great. Um, one thing I will say is I was, I've never knit something in just Surrey held by itself. Every time I've used Surrey before, I've held it with a um, fingering weight superwash merino yarn. Um, and so I wasn't sure how this was going to block. Like, was it going to grow a lot? Was it going to stay the same? I tried to ask on Instagram and nobody really gave me an answer. I had a couple people say it kind of stayed the same when they blocked it, but it was only two people who responded to my question, so I didn't really know. Um, and to be honest, I found that it did grow a little bit, but not as much as I think it would have grown if it was a... 
but it didn't grow as much as it probably would have if it was a uh, fingering weight superwash merino held with a surrey. Like when I knit my lento sweater, that's the combination that I used and I found that that growed quite a bit. So something to keep in mind. What did grow for me just a little bit was the neckline. I felt like the neckline widened up a bit um, and actually what I've done, I don't know if you can tell, you'll probably see it in the back maybe, right there, my tie, I um, sewed in a bit of elastic in the neck just through the I-cord. Um, you probably can't see it because it's, it's like too fluffy, but I just went in and out of the I-cord and pulled it in a little bit so that the neckline here, it was like probably out here, just to bring it in a little bit more so that it was a little bit closer to my neck. And I, I'm really happy I did that. I find that um, it makes it look a little bit better. So, happy with that. That was the growth. Um, let's see. One of... I didn't make too many changes from the pattern. I did close the V-neck here. Um, I connected the V one repeat earlier. So that was about four rows higher than it said to for the large pattern instructions. Um, and I'm happy I did that. I like it a little bit shorter. I honestly probably like would have been fine if it was even shorter, um, but that's okay. And then the other thing was I changed the sleeve decrease rate. So for the large, I think it said to decrease every seven rounds. I don't know why, but I changed it to every eight rounds. I don't think you can really see like the decreases on here. It almost looks like it's just straight. Um, and then the other thing that I did was the very last round, I wanted to do more of a rapid decrease for a little bit of a balloon sleeve. And I do think it's hard to see. Hold on. Let me see. You can kind of see at the very end here, it comes in a little bit. Um, Maybe I'll try to put a clip in because when I was filming my weekend vlog, um, I did one sleeve straight with no decreases and then one sleeve, sleeve, sleeve with the decreases. And you could really tell then the difference um, of it coming in more and I just liked the way that it looked better. So um, I just did like a knit three, knit two together all the way around. I wanted to make sure it wasn't going to be too tight over my like hand. Um, and honestly, like I could have decreased it more even and been fine with that, uh, length there, circumference there. So, but I'm happy with where it's at now. This is ultimately like super squishy, super fluffy, super soft. I don't know. Can you see? I can see it in the viewfinder. Can you see the fuzz sticking off of this? Like, I almost think I need to shave it. Um, I'm just like worried about it, like getting fluff on everything that it touches, but I love it. Um, this was my, what I was calling my serotonin cast on. At the time, a couple weeks ago, I really just needed like a knit that was going to bring me a lot of joy. I wasn't finding that joy in the two cable projects that I had cast on just because they were a bit more complicated and I had to pay more attention to them and I was feeling the like looming deadline of needing to get those done before my trip. Um, and so I wasn't finding that serotonin, that happiness there in those projects. I cast this on. I have had this yarn in my stash for over a year. And every time I like looked over at my yarn cubbies, I like my eyes were just drawn to that. And I was like, I want to cast that on. I want to make that sweater. I've seen, like I saw on Instagram and on YouTube, so many people wearing a cumulus blouse. Um, recently in like their flock fiber festival videos and just like other travel videos and I was like I really want that sweater I need to make it so and I've been wanting to make it for over a year since I got the yarn and so I was just like now is the time now is the time we're gonna make this so I made it and I'm really really happy with it and it made me really happy every time I worked on it so 
that is my advice to you is to cast on a serotonin project for yourself something that you've been wanting to cast on forever something that you've had the yarn for forever and something that's going to make you happy when you work on it and when you finally get to wear it if it's a wearable maybe your serotonin cast on is not a wearable maybe it's for someone else i don't know whatever it floats your boat so let me see if I have anything else to say about this. I would definitely knit a second one of these. I, in fact, I have yarn in my stash to make a second cumulus blouse um, <clears throat> with Surrey alpaca lace so that it's not as thick, not as bulky, and it like is more what the pattern intended it to be um and i actually think that'll be nice too to have like a thick bulky version and a less thick like thinner version um, i think the thinner version obviously or honestly will be more wearable here in southern california i may be able to wear it when the temperatures are you know slightly lower than 90 degrees but you know our temperatures don't get super low here all the time so um we'll see maybe that'll be my next serotonin cast on who knows i haven't really figured that out yet <laughs> but yeah that's it overall i'm really really happy with it and love it so much so my cumulus blouse okay i'm gonna take it off now because it's a little warm <laughs> all right the next project that I want to talk to you about is my main whip right now, and I think you may be surprised as to what it is. Um, I'm holding it in my Ocean Knits Girl Knitting on Top of a Whale bag. I love this. It's so fun. Um, but my main whip right now is not a sweater. And honestly, I think that's pretty surprising for me <laughs> because for like over a year, I've always had a sweater on the needles and yes I do have sweaters on the needles I'm just like not working on them right now they're all kind of just like in time out in the whip corner uh in my whip pile so yeah my main whip right now is a hat this is the Spur hat by Hiromi Nagasawa for plain needleworks um and yeah, it's a hat. The yarn that I'm using for this is Ruby and Roses Soft Rose Base in the colorway Wax Seal. I love this color so much. I think it's such a gorgeous, like, bright, jewel-toned, burgundy, purple, red, pink color. And it's definitely a tonal. You can definitely see all the different like colors in there. There's some darker stripes, some lighter stripes coming through. Um, and I just think this is going to be so lovely. Like, this is definitely like my color. So, I'm really excited for it. Um, the Spur hat is also, guys. I'm not knitting an Oslo hat. Like. That also may be surprising to you. I picked a hat pattern that was not the Oslo hat. Um, basically, I had, you know, one skein of fingering weight yarn, and I'm, like, trying to find a hat pattern that I like for one skein of fingering instead of always needing to buy two skeins of fingering or two skeins of DK for an Oslo hat because, you know, one skein is just more cost effective than having to use two skeins for a hat. Don't get me wrong, I still absolutely love the Oslo hat. I still have multiple, like, two skein quantities in here to knit Oslo hats. Um, I just wanted to try something different with this one. So, um, it's an interesting hat pattern. So, I'm com finished with the 2x2 two two rib. You can see all of this is 2x2 two two rib. And the section that I'm in now is a 1x1 one one rib section. And then... All of this is really going to get folded up as the brim of the hat, and then the top part is actually brioche, so I'm really looking forward to that. I think it'll be really fun, um, and it's just something different. I was really kind of looking for a ribbed hat, um, again, something different in both knitting and style and looks-wise, different from the Oslo hat that I already have one of, um, and so yeah, that's where we're at with this. 
I've got four and a half more rows left in this one by one ribbing section uh, until I get to move on to the brioche. So that's exciting. I do have to say I have realized that I like two by two ribbing. I like the I like the knitting. Um, I don't know what word I'm looking for. I like knitting two by two rib more than I like knitting one by one rib. One by one rib, I feel like just takes so long but two by two I don't know I was I was getting into the rhythm of it like way easier so I don't know maybe I need to look for a sweater pattern that uses two by two rib instead of one by one on like you know the collar and sleeve cuffs and stuff so we'll see um, but the other notable thing to to talk to you about with this is the yarn, Ruby and Roses. I am actually an affiliate member with Ruby and Roses. So if you are interested in this color or any of the other amazing colors that Addie has on her website, you can click the link in the description box down below to shop. Um, it doesn't cost anything extra for you, uh, but it helps me out a little bit and I would always really appreciate it. Ruby and Roses is debuting their uh, fall collection um, basically now. I know at least one of the colorways, if not a couple of the colorways, have al already been revealed on Instagram. Um, so you can go follow her to also see more of the fall colorways, as well as I know she still has yarn in stock from her most recent collection, which was the Yarn Airy collection uh, inspired by the Canary Islands. So that's Ruby and Roses. I'm, I have two other colorways from her and I love them. Um, her like most prominent style of the way that she hand dyes yarn is like a style that she calls her watercolor style and I think it just like looks gorgeous and it knits up really gorgeous as well. Um, a lot of her colors, like her variegated colors, have like speckles in them and just the way that it like flows over the yarn that I've seen knit up in her photos is really really beautiful. So Ruby and Rose's yarn, the Spur hat, I love it. Okay that's my main whip. Maybe that'll be done next time I talk to you. All right, I've got a couple more things I wanna show you. Let's see, first up, I have made a tiny bit of progress on my Sophie shawl, and we are so close to getting this done. I'm not gonna spend too much time on it, but I just wanted to show you how much I have left. This is folded at the midpoint, so you can see I'm here, and this is how much more I have left. I really think this is like one or two sittings of knitting just to get this done. Um, and every time I pull this out, I just like, the way that this feels, like this garter stitch fabric, it feels so good. It just makes me wanna like mm, squish it so much. Um, I'm really excited to block this. I think when I block it, I'm gonna like hang it over my, I've got like a, um, like a hanging rack in my laundry room. I think I'm just gonna hang it over that and let it drape and let gravity like really pull pull it down and stretch it out so that it's like as stretched out as possible. I think that'll be really nice. Um, look at my yarn, it's all. <laughs> it's all like collapsed. This is the first time I normally pull my yarn from the outside and for this I had to pull from the outside and the inside so the inside is just like obviously like it's just like collapsing because there's nothing in here but the way the like squish factor on this versus like a normal cake of yarn that I use it's just so funny it's like super squishy so anyway it's not important just something funny that I've been thinking about um this, this is the Sophie Shawl by Petite Knit, and the yarn that I use for this, I keep forgetting to mention, is Hedgehog Fibers. Sock yarn in the colorway Taffy. And I had three skeins of this, so I knew I wanted to make like an extra long Sophie Shawl. 
Um, I held, it's socks, it's fingering weight, so I'm actually holding two strands together. And I just knit until I was halfway done with all my yarn. I had 300 grams, so I made sure uh, when I hit the like 150 gram mark, I knew that I wanted to start decreasing at that point, and that's what I did. Super easy. So if you've got three skeins of fingering weight in your stash, you could make something similar. Okay, lastly on the knitting front, don't get too excited about this, okay? But I put my Dorney sweater back on the needles. If you watched my weekend, long weekend knitting vlog, this was one of my goals was to get the Dorney back on the needles and I honestly like couldn't do it over the weekend. <laughs> I had like a major block uh, still and I couldn't do it. But today I got a comment on that video uh, from Marlene of Marlene Knits and she said something along the lines of, I you know, wish you luck in finishing your Dorney, it would look great in Ireland. And uh, that gave me the motivation to at least put it back on the needles. So if you're watching Marlene, thank you. Um, I don't know if I'm going to work on it at all anytime soon, but at least it's on the needles. So I just wanted to share that. Okay, that is all of my knitting updates. Again, I'm really focusing on the, sh the, the spur hat. And, oh, the other piece that I want to talk to you about a little bit is... I am working on a video that will go live in the next couple of weeks here um, that's like a refreshing my fall wardrobe. I have a few sweaters from that I knit up last fall and winter that I didn't I didn't complete like a hundred percent like they're done they're finished objects but they need some modifications made to them um mostly i need to lengthen the sleeves on i think all three of them and i want to lengthen the ribbed hem. and i want to lengthen the ribbed hem on a couple of them so that knitting also will be coming up soon um I may show that in like a regular podcast episode once I finish the sweaters, finish the modifications, but all of that will also be in a separate video coming soon, so just as an FYI. Um, okay, I have one acquisition, but before I get to the acquisition, I do want to show you also, I guess this is kind of part of an acquisition, I got these buttons on Etsy. I've got a whole bag of them. Um, but they're these brown... Let me just show you one. Brown wooden buttons. And I'm considering changing out the buttons on my Cal cardigan. So these are the ones that I have right now. I got these from Joanne. They're like gold-ish super fancy looking this was like they used to have a really good button selection at joanne it was like two full like walls of it and now they're down to like half a wall and i was not impressed with the selection so this is what i could find um you know when i went there but i just feel like like they're pretty i like them but i don't feel like they really match the vibe of my cal cardigan so a lot of people had suggested wood buttons and I kind of just wanted to get your opinion hold this up and see what it looked like oh gosh I'm gonna drop it I don't know can you like tell see even just from this like small picture I think this looks way better I think it just like fits better I know it's weird with me like holding it but I don't know I know a lot of people have opinions so let me know what you think dark wood button I'm kind of leaning at changing them out to this dark wood button or gold button let me know what you think I think dark wood button but I'm curious your thoughts. 
Okay. That's that. Um, okay, my acquisition. Eee! Okay, I'm excited to show you this. So, there's a new yarn dyer here in Southern California, and they are called Dusty Yarn Co. And Audrey is, um, the name of the person who runs Dusty Yarn Co. with her company, uh, with her husband. And I had been friends with Audrey on Instagram. I haven't met her in, in real life yet, though I'm hoping to this weekend at the San Diego Yarn Crawl. Um, I, I had been friends with her on Instagram for a while, and then she's, they started dyeing yarn. And of course, I wanted to support them, and so I bought some yarn. Let me show you. Uh. <laughs> okay, let me show you what I got. I have to show you this hot pink yarn first. Actually, hold on. Let me show you first their like logo, their card. Isn't this so cute? Sun Surf Dusty. I am obsessed with their logo of this van with uh, their dog in the window and the yarn on top of it. I got a sticker. I love it so much. And okay, let me show you the yarn. So I have to show you this one first. It's hot pink. Um, this is called Boygen Via. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm probably saying it wrong. But it's those like pink purpley flowers. If you've been to Southern California, they're like all over the place and they're gorgeous. So I got six skeins of this on Classic Fingering. So 100% Superwash Merino 4-ply, 437 yards per 100 grams. Um, and I think it's gorgeous. I love it so much. And then I got three skeins of this color, which is called Lavender Haze. Again, on the Classic Fingering base. And I love this but also i repainted my nails last night this um olive and june colorway called lavender stems and i posted it on instagram like redoing my mani um and audrey commented and she was like okay but how closely does that match lavender haze and i was like let me go check for you and I sent her this picture and I was like, Audrey, it's perfect match. It's a perfect match. So, um, yeah, if you would like to buy this yarn and also buy this nail polish, check out Dusty Yarn Co. to get the yarn and check out my affiliate link below with Olive and June and get you a bottle of lavender stems because I love it. It's pretty. It doesn't really match like any of what I'm wearing. It doesn't really go with the green. It doesn't really go with the pink cumulus blouse, but it does go with this. So I'm going to need to make something with this soon. I'm really thinking, um, have you seen Laura Penrose's sibling sweater, my size striped sweater that she did in like a white and like purple stripes? I'm really thinking I want to do something striped with this because um, I think it would be really cute. I really, I really like was in love with those colors that she put together for that. So, and then along with my order, she was so sweet. She also sent me these um, progress keepers that were put together by Evie, one of their daughters, and. I just think they're so cute. Actually, there's one more that I had to immediately put on my project also. This white. Oh. There we go. This white flower. I thought that went really well with the like purple burgundy color of this yarn. It would go really well with Boygenvia also. These two colors are like kind of close. Yeah, so. But aren't these the sweetest? I love them. Really excited to use them. So, 
Again, Dusty Yarn Co. Go follow them on Instagram. They need more followers. <laughs> because their work is beautiful. Um, these two colorways are part of their inaugural SoCal collection. They have, I want to say like nine or ten colorways up right now. There's actually more that I would love to buy. They have like a turquoisey green color called Los Rios that Audrey used for an Ali's sweater uh, light. And I think it's absolutely gorgeous. I really want that colorway too, but I haven't <laughs> purchased it yet. That might be my next, uh, my next purchase from them. So, all right, let's see. Um, coming up um, this weekend, I'm going to the San Diego Yarn Crawl. Um, so I don't know if I'm going to film a full video, but I'll definitely be taking photos and sharing that on my Instagram. If you're interested in checking that out, you can follow me over there at Knit California. Um, the latest video that I posted that went up earlier this week was the My Long Knitting Weekend, a vlog all about uh, finishing my cumulus blouse, as well as working on some other goals that I had set, my, set for myself during the long weekend. Um, the video, it's been up for a couple days now, has just had a really really great reception so if you've watched it thank you guys so much I really appreciate that um, I really didn't think it would get as many views as quickly because I have found that my vlog style videos just don't do quite as well as my podcast videos so it's really exciting to see that that video is doing well and I really appreciate it and yeah that's it that's it for the news i guess if you uh, are new around here please hit the subscribe button if you've made it this far that makes me think you might like the video and you might like future content from me so hit that subscribe button hit the notification bell so you don't miss any uploads follow me over on instagram follow me over on tiktok I have everything that I talked about linked down in the description box below. I have all of my partnerships also linked in the description box down below. Anna Luisa Jewelry, Twice Sheared Sheep, Olive in June, my Amazon link, Ruby and Roses, all of it linked down below if you're interested in checking any of it out. All right, I think that was it. That was a lot. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you on the next one. Bye!